Hello everyone and welcome. I am Sanjit from IBM. This is a short video on the NZSQA SCAD queues command output which commonly used with performance troubleshooting. You have heard about the workload management or WLM feature in NPS. The workload of a NPS consists of user-initiated jobs such as SQL queries, administration tasks, data loads, and system-initiated jobs such as regions, etc. WLM controls and monitor these concurrent queries. This is done via a set of schedulers and administration control policy in DBoss. The SCAD queues command is one of the most useful tool that can help you to understand the current WLM setup and troubleshoot scheduling issues in NPS. The SCAD queues output is indeed complex and provide a lot of information. This command produces point in time information for every scheduler as well as usage summary, resource availability, etc. It displays plan and snippets those scheduled to run or currently running on NPS. This output has four distinct sections, the scheduler policy, known resource group, the GRS SCAD, and the snippet SCAD sections. We will break down the SCAD queues output and discuss each individual sections in detail. The scheduler policy section summarizes the different schedulers and workload management settings. The SCAD time represents date and time when the command executed. This time is important when you investigate a problem and comparing information with some other log files. The scheduler policy section summarizes the current scheduler settings and displays the maximum unit of work allowed. All the scheduler policies defined in the system.cfg configuration file. Let's take a look into some of these settings. The license resource indicates the current growth on demand or GOD settings. When an ATSA machine is sold on the basis of GOD license, only part of the whole system resource can be used. The GOD settings throttle down a system to a percentage to simulate a smaller machine. The minimum license capacity is 50% and it can be increased up to 100%. In this example, the system limit is set to 50%. The current resource allocations or GRA slots control the system-wide number of slots can be used for plans. The max slots represents maximum number of slots available for all plans. The SQB slots allows number of slots reserved for short queries. Snippet scheduling is always enabled. There is a limitation in scheduler which schedule maximum 40 snippets concurrently. Just like GRA, SQB slots represents number of slots reserved for snippet associated with the small queries. SQB is a special resource reserved for short queries. By default, queries those estimated to run in two seconds or less treated as a short queries. NPS use this reserve resource to run short queries even when um, system is busy running longer queries. The latency-based scheduling or the LPS is introduced in NPS release 7.2. The LPS applied preference for how it schedules queries to run and how many queries can run concurrently to maximize the query throughput of the system. By default, LPS is enabled. When GOD is set to less than 100, you cannot disable the LPS. Starting with NPS release 7.2.0.8 or 7.2.1.2, it is no longer possible to disable LPS when GOD is enabled. By default, GRA load is enabled. Without GRA load control, load run without limits and it might slow down other queries. The null IO, ceiling, SN limit, etc. are different NPS features. Depend on enable or disabled of these features, system control various internal metrics to adjust the resource available to a snippet. The known resource group section lists all the resource group configured on the system. You can use scheduler rules and resource group to classify plans into the different groups. A resource group settings determine what portion of the need system resource you can allocate to a plan 
that associated with a particular group. You can create as many resource group as you need. By default, each NPS has two resource group, public and admin. When you create a user and do not explicitly associate it with a group, it automatically assigned it to public. A admin resource group is a special group. None of the scheduler restriction apply to this group. Moreover, the admin resource group will always get at least 50% of the resource of the machine. It is highly recommend that you should not use the admin resource group for daily operation. Here, each line listed resource allocations for individual resource group. The OID represent object ID of the group. The OID of the admin group is always 4900 and public is 4901. The mean value shows minimum resource of a particular resource group. This is determines the smallest fraction of net system resource that made available to the group. For admin group, mean is always 100. The max value shows maximum resource of a particular resource group. This determines the largest fraction of net system resource that are available to the group. The mean and max values here are relative percentage that proportionate to total of all resource groups. The job maximum attribute of the resource group restrict the maximum number of plants associated with the resource group that can run at any time. A value of zero indicates that there is no limit imposed. The value of indicates the attributes is switched off. The rightmost column shows the actual resource group name. The GRS SCID section displayed information about the GRS scheduler. GRS scheduler deals with plans, it shows some overall values and statistics of jobs. The GRS scheduler tracks resource usage to ensure that each resource group receive its minimum allocation of resource when all groups are actively using the system. Under the plan statistics, the short column indicates the number of running or queued plans that are short. The preparation time estimate less than two seconds for these plans. Long represents the number of running or queued plan that are not short or not meet by the SQB criteria. Similarly, waiting shows the number of plans that are waiting to be scheduled by the GRS scheduler. The running indicates number of plans that are scheduled by the GRS scheduler and passed to the snippet scheduler which are now running. Resource horizon is the length of time that GRA used to report on resource usage. It's set to one hour by default and GRA forget anything older than one hour. Resource interval is the length of the time for GRA bucket. Anything that happens during this interval is lumped together. Horizon and intervals are linked there are 60 interval per horizon. The default is one minute. Activity is the percentage of time during the previous interval that jobs were running. The group statistics reports the status of the system. Allowed EXP is the average horizon period of the target resource group percentage. The main target values are allowed depends on whether any jobs are running in the current or other groups. There is also an additional value called expected, which could be used as a target when the group is not able to use assigned resource. For each target, there are two group of values displayed, one for horizon period and other for interval. If only admin is running jobs and admin is running job all the time, both these values would be 100%. It would take an hour for horizon values to reach 100%, but it would take a minute for the interval. Used shows the recorded resource used during the current resource horizon and interval as a percentage of the total resource available. This part represents how the amount of resource used compared to the amount of resource allowed. It also shows the name of the resource group. 
The exempt is a special value for admin group only. Balanced is the desired choice which indicate the amount of resource used and allowed are nearly equal. If any resource group continuously running into overserved or very overserved for a long period of time, you may need to increase the resource allowed for that particular resource group. The snippet sketch section displays information about the snippet scheduler, for example, the limit and usage of the fixed resource. The snippet scheduler run only those snippets that appear to fit in the available fixed resource. It first checks the estimates against the available resource and depend on the current resource availability, it runs the snippet. There are several fixed resource related to host, spoo, memory, and distribution channels. You can pause now and familiar yourself with a different fixed resource. All the memory values in fixed resource are in 128 KB blocks. Delta is the amount of memory in use above the total estimated. Reserve is the buffer reserved for SQB. Long running jobs do not use those. Waiting shows the number of short or long snippets that are waiting to be scheduled by the snippet scheduler. The spoo running displays information about the snippets for which code is currently running on the spoo. The first value is the average number of the snippets of the corresponding short or long type that are running on each slice. The second value is the number of snippets that are running on the slice on which the largest number of snippets of the corresponding short or long are running. The host running shows number of short or long snippets for which code is currently running on the host. This section is symmetric to the GRA plan statistics. The resource horizon represents length of time that the snippet scheduler used to report on resource usage. The snippet scheduler forget everything older than the horizon. The default horizon is 10 minutes here. Resource interval shows the length of time of each snippet bucket. This is always 1 60th of the resource horizon. Activity is the proportion of time during the previous interval that any jobs was running. The first part of this section is symmetric to the GRA skate group statistics. But in GRA, it only lists waiting plans, whereas here it lists running and waiting plans. Let's take a quick look into the group reason message. It displays status of preliminary part of task selection. Some of the possible values are listed in the slide. The job max indicate request to run a new plan was denied because of the limit set by the job maximum attributes of the group was reached. Uh, you need to check the known resource group section for the job max settings for this problem. Uh, the snip limit means a request to run a new snippet was denied because the corresponding resource group is overserved, and running another snippet for that group would exceed the limit computed by the scheduler. This section of the output list all the plans for which snippets are waiting or running. The count indicates the number of plans in each list. The plan ID is the ID of the plan. If you see a plus symbol and followed by a number that indicates the number of prior plans associated with it. The CMD column shows the first three letters of the corresponding SQL statement. For example, UPD stands for update, ACL for select, INS for insert, etc. For slides, a number uh, preceded by a equal sign is the ID of the only slice that contained the data for that plan. Whereas a number preceded by a hash is the number of the slice on which the snippet for the plan is active. The plan EST part shows cost estimated by the optimizer in seconds, whereas SCAD EST represent the cost estimated in seconds by the scheduler. 
Here, P represents priority. The priority of the plan can be the initial alphabet of critical, high, normal, or low. The snippet column shows two different information. The left column displays the number of the snippet that is currently running by the plan. The right column displays the total number of snippets for that plan. The column C represents the number of IFCOM channel used for the communication. The MIM column shows the amount of memory estimated or used by the plan. There are three different parts in the memory estimate. H represents the amount of estimate by the host. S for amount of estimate by the SPOO. And the S act shows approximate amount of memory actually used by SPOO. The TEMP column displays the slice with the largest number of TEMP pages in use. The WTREQ column shows the percentage of overall resource allocated to the snippet and if any amount of ceiling applied. The age shows three different time lapse. SNP displays the number of seconds since the current snippet was entered into the current queue. Plan indicates number of seconds since the first snippet of the plan was started. The null IO is an indication of problem. It shows number of seconds that the current snippet waiting for external IO. The scan column shows two things. Left field shows number of the scan on which the slowest slice is working. The right field displays total number of scan associated with the plan. The percentage indicates pages that have been read by the plan during the primary scan. The client column represents the client ID, the unique ID of the DBoss client, and the session ID. The SD column can contain either S or D as a value. S means plan contains a sort operation. D means plan carried out a spoo to spoo distribute operation. In this example, rules column is empty but rules displays short form of scheduler rules that applied to the plan. You can pause the video to check the different type of scheduler rules listed in this slide. The flags column provides additional information about the corresponding snippet. Some of the common flags are listed here. There are many more flags available. You can check the built-in help for other flag description. Thanks for watching. Hope this video provides a basic understanding of the SkateQ output. Stay tuned for the next part of our SkateQ video. Goodbye. Until next time.